All right, in this video, I am gonna be showing you the number one way to fix your credit this year. Um, this is gonna be the only video that you need, so I'm gonna get straight to it. So grab you a pen, paper, and let's get started. So this first step is completely optional, but it's something that I personally recommend so that you can stay up to date because when you're trying to fix your credit, you are racing against the clock and you need to have good note-taking skills, okay? And you need to make sure you are adhering to your headlines. So Notion is a free app, a website, whatever way you want to use it. I use to keep myself organized. So the first thing you want to do is create a free account. And once you create a free account, I want you to go to where it says templates. You're going to find that all the way in the bottom right hand corner. You see where my uh, mouse is circling right there in templates. Right when you find templates, you're going to go down to where it says more templates and you're gonna search credit tracker. So that's when you're gonna find this. Or I can just send you the link straight to it. This is completely free. It is free, it is free, it is free. And it is how you are gonna be keeping up with your credit disputes going forward. So I'm gonna pull up what it looks like. I'm also gonna show you why it's so great, but this is not the, the purpose of this video. So you can feel free to skip this if you need to. But first of all, you're gonna write down, you know, your starting score, your current score every month. And then what you're gonna do is write down the day that you, or I'm sorry, select the day that you put your score. And once you do that, once you drag it down, it's gonna send you a reminder of when your new score is available so that you do not miss your 30 day pull. You can do the same thing for the day that you send out your letters so that you can get a reminder. Right here, what we're gonna talk about later, your credit freeze information. This is where you can keep up with all of your pins so that when you're ready to unfreeze your credit and reapply for more credit in the future, you already know and have your information stored. This is gonna give you a good view of your positive accounts and show you your utilization rates to make sure you pan it down. This is gonna be an overview of your negative accounts and what you can do to get, I'm sorry, your negative accounts and the stages they are in and their removal. This is gonna show you all of your accounts. We're gonna look at that later. This is to keep up with your personal information because we know although your personal information does not impact your credit score, it can be used to tie it to your old accounts. So this here, you can use this as a storage area for all of those old addresses that you're using to get rid of. So key dates, once we get to um, showing you all of your accounts, I'm going to show you how this calendar can be used as a reminder. You'll get a reminder to your personal calendar or through Notion, depending on how you set it up, to remind you when it's time for you to pay your credit card bill, okay? So if you use Smart Credit, which I personally recommend, you won't need this uh, because Smart Credit automatically emails you when it's time for you to pay your personal bills. But if you don't, here is a workaround for that. So briefly, I'm going to show you how to set up all of your accounts. So after you pull your credit report, you can pick any of these views or you can just go to new. That might be the easiest thing. And we're going to expand our properties. You're going to put your account name. So let's say Capital One. The account type. So whether it's an inquiry, a charge off a collection, whatever, what bureaus is reporting to account number, whether it's open or closed, the address, the balance that you owe, your limit. So this is really beneficial for your open account. So once you put your balance and your limit, it's gonna calculate your utilization rate. You can also put in your close date. So that's what I said, you'll get that reminder on that other calendar of when that is due, your due date and et cetera, as well as your uh, APY, if you're ever needing to just briefly look at your open accounts and see what options you have. So then also it gives you the option to say whether it's negative, positive, whether you paid it off or whether it's in dispute. So based on these things that you select, you'll be able to start populating data here. So all of your good standing accounts will be here. All of your negative accounts will be here. All of your inquiries will be here. If you have it marked as disputed, um, it will show you all of your items that you have dispute and it will group them for those that are deleted versus those that are not. This is a view for your late payments. And then of course, yay, when you have them deleted. So this is the client tracker. I 100% recommend this free tool to keep up with all of your disputes. This is housed in the free app Notion. 
So again, this is a later, another overview for it. I also like that I can open up these pages and just paste in the information that I use. So sometimes I'll just paste in a copy of my old letters so I can just keep track of it and make sure that I'm not repeating anything. And I also keep up with my complaints here. So that is the optional step to fix your credit. Now let's get into the good stuff. So like I said, the extra credit was to download the credit tracker to keep up with your disputes. So the very, very first thing you wanna do is create a free account online with the big three. So TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian. So let's start with Experian. This is what the website will look like. If you don't have an account, you'll click on sign up for free and walk through the steps. So I do have an account, so I'm just gonna sign in. When you log in, it's gonna show you this. We are not upgrading our account at all. We're gonna go down to no, keep my current members. So once you log in, hover over in the right-hand corner and go to where you see Help Center. So once you get to the Help Center, you're gonna place your free credit freeze. And I want you to go this way because if you select um, lock your credit profile, it's going to ask you to pay some money and we're not paying money. So what we're gonna do is manage security freeze. And when you go here, this is how you can freeze and unfreeze your account. If you have the Experian app on your phone, you can do it the same way. So right now it's frozen. If it was not frozen, you know, you just click over. So that's pretty much self-explanatory. Let's say, you know, you wanted to go to the car lot on Friday and you already plan to do it. You can schedule a thaw. So you can say, you know, I want my credit report to be free this date range and then I want to frozen it again. So that is just the option that you have out there. So that is how you freeze your profile with Experian. And now I'm going to show you how you do it with the rest of them. Just go to Equifax.com. You can log in or sign up now. Oh, I'm sorry. Don't click on sign up now. Just click on log in anyway. And then if it says, just ignore all of this and click over here our plan start at free so choose my plan get started then you log in oh I got a question why they hate no me got a question why they hate no me okay so that is how you will create that's how you'll create your account let's see if they will let me just log in anyway and it won't but it's just it's a little easier than Equifax I'm sorry it's a little bit easier than Experian you don't get so many prompts to pay um, but when you log in, it's going to be a big freeze uh, icon or a big snowflake icon that you can click on to freeze your Equifax profile. So now I'm on transunion.com. I want to click on get started now. So TransUnion and Equifax, these ones are not as hard as Experian. I'm only saying Experian is hard because they keep trying to trap you to pay for something. I think you get like just one quick prompt to pay with uh, Equifax and then it's smooth sailing and then the same with TransUnion. So I might just skip past this part of showing you exactly how. So after you created these profiles and you froze, you froze your credit profile, the next thing you need to do is dispute your personal information so we're going to log in and dispute our outdated and incorrect personal information we're not going to dispute any of our accounts but just our incorrect and outdated names addresses phone numbers and emails this is the only thing you want to do online oh here we go it finally loads so this is how you will set up your experience. I'm sorry, your TransUnion profile. And then you're just going to sign in. Like I said, freeze it. And now I'm going to show you how you will be disputing. So let's go back to Experian. To dispute with Experian, you're just going to go back to the icon here. Click on Help Center. And then click on File a Dispute. So you'll just click start a new dispute and you know, just look for your personal information, click on it and click on incorrect or outdated. So the only thing that I say will be a drawback with Experian is sometimes when you go to dispute those old addresses, it will not let you. It'll say, hey, you know, address 123 Sesame Street is 
tied to Capital One four five six so that's not the end of the road that just means we won't be disputing it online and that's that's not a problem so that's where you'll just write down the address put it to the side in your credit tracker if you went ahead and downloaded it so you got started with the big three big one there are so many credit bureaus out there so now i'm going to be showing you how to keep the ball rolling so now you want to create a security freeze for the secondary bureaus and also request a copy of your credit report. So somebody might be watching this like, dang, I didn't even know there were secondary bureaus. Of course, of course. So that's why we want to make sure we are requesting a copy of those reports. So the very first one. So first of all, let me break it down. I'm going to show you the ones that we can get a instant result from online, which means, you know, we give them our personal information and boom, instantly we get a copy of our report. Then I'm going to show you the ones where you can add in your information and they mail it in. And then lastly, the ones that you can only talk to through the paper trail. OK, so. The very first one is clarity, so you're just going to. Go to report and access your credit report. So, Clarity is really good for um, cleaning up your personal information, removing inquiries. If you have any charge-offs, if you have any charge-offs with Akima Digital, uh, any telecommunications, it's considered uh, something that reports subprime information. So this is how you will get your Clarity report. And when you get it, a trick to download it is clicking on print and then instead of printing save it as PDF so whenever you open up your report just save it as a PDF or PDF to print to make sure that you can access it later same thing for creating a security freeze um, you just click on place a security freeze and it'll instantly give you your uh, pin number where you can store it in your client tracker so like I said I want to keep this video really short the next one is going to be a novice. So you're going to click on order my credit report and they're going to ask you for verification questions to get through. Once you get through and you actually pull your report, you'll get the option to later create a sign in so that you can. Uh, so that you can. Log in and revisit your information. And novice is famous for reporting inquiries, late payments and public records. The next one is checks. So the same thing, uh, submit a security request online. You'll just put the registration form out. They'll start asking you verification questions. So checks is really important if you ever, I don't know, had a line of credit, if you ever had any bad checks or have a history of just having an overdrafted account. So an overdrafted account history can impact your credit limit. So this is definitely a report that you want to pull. ARS is another sub-bureau that is important to place a security freeze for. And like I said again, they offer the online option. So this is what their website looks like. And I'm also going to share the link. And then lastly, we have NCTUE. So this is important for if you had any utilities in your name that may have been charged off or in collection to get removed so you want to place a freeze and you also want to request your information so those are the ones I feel like i'm rambling so that is why i wrote down a spark note version of everything and i know you're probably thinking like dang all of these sub bureaus how do i keep up with them this is where Notion comes into play. Again, I created this shared page that lists all of the top sub bureaus that you may want to reach out to as well as the links to get them. All you have to do is search secondary bureau list shared in Notion. It's also filtered to show you which ones you have to mail your request to and the ones that you can create an online request to. Then I listed the bankruptcy bureaus as well. If you do not have a bankruptcy, you still need to reach out to LexisNexis, which I have listed in the homework. Because they carry the keys to removing your personal information as well. So 
I'm going to, I kind of skip right past this part because I already have a template full of the empty letters that I send out uh, to request the information from these bureaus. So all in one, I say, hey, I want to freeze my report and I want a copy of it. With that, you're going to attach your personal docs. So your, um, I'm sorry guys, it's been a long day your ID and make sure you know on your ID your address matches where you want your mail sent and a utility bill to validate that address um, another piece of information that can verify who you are if you don't have a current ID or license is a social security card so that was the hard part okay sending out those freezes can be a little bit intimidating but it's not that bad So it's not as hard as it looks. Um, requesting the security freeze can literally be this simple. Let's say you know you went online and you were not able to get the online results. Or if you want to skip doing it online and just want to give it all in one go, here's something super simple that you will send out. You know, you don't even have to put their addresses on there. I just do this from my own personal knowledge, but you just say security freeze. You know, this is a formal request to freeze my credit report. As per your website, here's the information. Let's throw in another line. This is a formal request for a copy of my consumer disclosure report as well boom then like i said drop your personal docs send this out easy peasy lemon squeezy okay i will 100 percent stay away from sending this stuff out online um although it's a lot easier and a lot convenient to use places like docupost to send your your mail right from home what i'm learning is they don't send it the same day it may take a couple days before they send it out and the envelope that they use is so branded that you're automatically going to be marked as a credit repair company okay so just go to the post office man and send this letter out it does not have to be um certified mail if you want to make a certified meal, more power to you. Now, the moment that you've been waiting for, after you froze your accounts and you've gotten a copy of your credit reports, you're going to send out your very first letter, okay? You're going to update it to your personal information, first name, last name, your full address, your birthday, your full social security number, only when you're talking to the credit bureaus, okay? The name of the bureau the date you sent it out so if you have your notion dashboard i'm gonna bring it back up again all you're gonna do is go to view all of your accounts items in dispute and what you'll do is let's move that around you'll copy your account name and number all of multiple ones you know drag and drop control c and paste it here as well as all the wrong names and addresses you have update it to your name and again put your information of your verification documents here so all we're doing is setting the trap we are not saying what is wrong we are not saying what's wrong we're saying hey i've seen this stuff on my credit report and i need you to check it out this is called putting the burden of proof on the credit bureau we're giving them 30 days and we are banking on the fact that they're not going to get it done in 30 days okay so using your tracker you're going to set your timer you can even set a reminder to get notified two to three days earlier for when it's time to send this uh next letter out so after 30 days you're going to send out letter two you're going to copy and paste everything from the first letter and put it here and all of this is just if i'm gonna zoom in just in case you want to screenshot this all of this is saying is i sent this letter out you were supposed to look into it within 30 days and you didn't you didn't and you broke the law and i'm mad and i'm so mad i want you to leave it all and i leave you alone so what you're going to do is send this letter out 
And if you want to add a little razzle dazzle to really pack a punch, you can file it with a CFPB complaint. So that's when you get to telling a mama, like now nah, I'm about to tell your mama what you did wrong because obviously when I work for you, you don't listen. So, so now I got to tell on you. So this is the number one way to clean up incorrect, inconsistent, erroneous, terrible information on your credit report in 30 days. This is the number one way to do it. The number one way, the secret that you have been missing in the past was filing disputes with the secondary bureaus that is the key that you have been missing if you have any questions or if you need a copy of any of this information shown just let me know thank you for watching